A lot of people have asked us at Take Flight via various social media outlets to explain what's really going on at Wellsbourne Airfield. Is the airfield still under threat? Of course it was under threat, saved, under threat again, saved, apparently CPO, not CPO, so where are we? Well, despite being the largest fixed wing operator at Wellsbourne and the apparent protection of the airfield from the council, my company was evicted from the airfield, making it, in my view, unviable. So, what's the story? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Wellsbourne Airfield in Warwickshire, in the very heart of the UK, was founded back in 1941, when 200 acres of farmland was purchased for use during the Second World War. The site was sold back to the pre-war owners, the Littler family, back in 1965. In October 2015, the landowners entered into an agreement with Gladland Developments to promote the site as a housing development. At that time, the airfield had approximately 80 to 100 based aircraft and a collection of general aviation businesses, boasting around 73,000 movements per annum and it had also won the AOPA Airfield of the Year. In November 2016, all but one of the aviation tenants at the airfield submitted a claim to renew their lease under the Landlord and Tenant Act. In December 2016, Stratford District Council passed a resolution to enter into negotiations with the owners of the airfield to agree the purchase of the site and in the event that this could not be achieved, to take steps to compulsorily purchase the airfield. They also, at my suggestion, made an order under Article 4 of the Town and Country Planning Act to remove the permitted development rights for demolition at the airfield. The council had already accepted the landlord's building notice at this point, and it's been acknowledged by the former leader of the council and the airfield owners that this is what prevented the airfield from demolition. This of course is why my company has since been victimised by the landowners. In February 2018, Aero's flight training left Wellsbourne Airfield, citing the legal costs, neglect of runways, taxiways and buildings. However, it's since been discovered that they had a private agreement to return to the airfield if it remained open. In June 2018, after a week-long trial the previous month, Judge Richard Williams dismissed the tenants' claims to renew their leases on the grounds that the landowners had a reasonable prospect of success of being able to demolish the tenants' premises. The case turned on two key elements. Firstly, the, land, uh, the airfield owners had to prove a settled intention to demolish the tenants' buildings, and secondly, they had to prove a reasonable chance of being able to bring about that intention, i.e. in this case planning permission to demolish the buildings. What is slightly confusing however is the landowners stated that they wanted to continue to run the airfield despite describing it as an onerous obligation, where well, you'd think it would be even more onerous without the substantial income that they derived from the tenants. This of course was to increase the likelihood of being able to obtain planning permission to demolish the buildings thus being more compliant with the local plan. But they also stated that under no circumstance would they allow the buildings to be reused for aviation at any point in the future. This was to increase again the chance of obtaining permission to demolish the buildings. The judge stated that this was a really important factor in his decision in dismissing the tenants' claims. However, of course, we've since learned that this was all untrue as an agreement already existed to let one of the previous tenants who'd left the airfield return into one of the very buildings that were due to be demolished and would not allegedly be used for aviation in any circumstances. So you may ask why the landowners went to all this trouble if they intended to re-let the premises. Well, it was to remove the tenants' protected tenancies. They now operate on a short-term licence with no legal protection. Litter Investment Solicitors actually confirmed this, stating what we actually did was the Section 25 notice with a view to gaining control of the air food. Because there were no written tenancies at the time, we had no means of controlling what was going on. 
So we took action. We gained control because the court accepted that we were entitled to possession. We now control the land. That's a perfectly normal landlord and tenant situation. And I'll remind you that you were offered a new tenancy before we served notice. Well, of course, we were offered a license, not really a tenancy. But hang on. They said there was no way that those buildings would ever be used for aviation in the future. This was to gain possession because they were going to demolish them following our eviction. But they offered us a license before the court case. So basically they were saying if you give up your tenancy and sign a license, you can stay. But if you don't, we're going to evict you and allegedly demolish the buildings. This, of course, is a complete misuse of the Landlord and Tenant Act and a misuse of court process. It's even been described as the trick of the Landlord and Tenant Act by a government minister to run down airfields and make them right for development. So why are we allowing this to continue? We thought Stratford District Council in particular were going to stand up and fight for aviation. In July 2018, Stratford District Council published a press release confirming that it had commenced the first stage of the CPO proceedings with a view to compulsorily purchasing Wellsbourne Airfield. In December 2018, the Wellsbourne Neighbourhood Development Plan was made. It followed an independent examination and it received over 93% of support at a local referendum. The plan supports the retention of the airfield. In fact, it states, existing commercial business premises and employment sites should be safeguarded within Wellsbourne and Walton, including the airfield. And the retention of the flying activities at Wellsbourne Airfield is supported. The role of the airfield must take into account and safeguard the needs of associated businesses, leisure and trading activities and enable them to grow. In 2019, an appeal for the tenants to renew their leases was heard and dismissed some two months later. A further business, Flywell Limited, goes into liquidation in August 2019 and On Track Aviation, a commercial flying organisation, also leave their premises at the airfield. Also in 2019, a Memorandum of Understanding is signed between Stratford District Council and the landowners to protect the established flying function of the airfield. The MOU sets out various commitments on the part of the landowners with regard to retaining and supporting the established flying functions at the airfield. A sudden change of heart, you might think, but merely it's to protect against a CPO. A single flying school, maintenance company, cafe, and helicopter company are all offered temporary licenses, but my company, Take Flight Aviation, the largest fixed wing operator, which gave the landlords businesses over £200,000 in the previous year and contrib contributed around 30% of the income to the maintenance company, is told that we are not being offered a license. What has later become apparent is this was strictly contrary to the terms of the MOU, as in September 2019, Stratford District Council are forced to reveal the contents of the MOU which they previously withheld. We had to make a Freedom of Information Act request to get the document disclosed. We then discovered that the Littler Investments Limited were obliged to do a few things, including use all reasonable endeavours to enter into a dialogue with all existing tenants and offer new tenancies on reasonable terms. Amongst other th assurances, there was also the retention of a flying club, which what Take Flight were. In October 2019, therefore, Take Flight wrote to the council pointing out the various breaches of the MOU. The parish council also made representations to Stratford District Council that the MOU agreement does not accord with the local plan and the failure to offer a tenancy to all the tenants is a breach of the MOU and an attempt to run the airfield down further and make it financially unviable. In December 2019, despite my company being evicted from the airfield, Stratford District Council refused planning permission for Take Flight Aviation to remove its own buildings from the site, stating that the offices supported the economic viability and flying function of the airfield and the application would 
cause detrimental harm to the viability and flying function of the airfield, therefore conflicting with the local and neighbourhood plan. Littler Investments Limited claimed that the reason Take Flight Aviation were not being offered a new tenancy was because of the breakdown in relationships because of the legal action. However, all of the tenants who were being offered a new tenancy had been involved in exactly the same legal action. In a meeting that took place at the Littler Investments Limited solicitor's office, it was confirmed the real reason that Take Flight were not being offered a new tenancy. That was because we had prevented them from doing what they wanted to do with their land because of the Article 4 direction. Of course, we were only doing what the local plan supported. After all, it was meant to protect the airfield and the businesses upon it as per the neighbourhood plan. The solicitor went on to say, uh, somewhat amusingly, that even most recently, he, that's referring to me, by the way, has gone on Midlands TV suggesting that my client is seriously seeking to manipulate the memorandum of understanding and in fact run down the airfield. Really? Manipulate the memorandum of understanding? Would that be the same MOU that made assurances on behalf of the landowner to enter into negotiations with all the tenants at the airfield, retain a flying club and protect the established flying function and work collaboratively with the council, yet refuse to do any of those things despite the council's objections. In a meeting a few days after the meeting with the solicitors, I spoke to the manager of the airfield, also a director of Littler Investments Limited, about the breakdown of relationship. He said that Take Flight actually were his best customer so surely losing 50% of the airfield businesses would be considered to run down the airfield. So the council had previously stated they would support all the businesses at the airfield and offered written assurances that all the businesses would be treated equally, but they've accepted the eviction of my company with the loss of 20 full and part-time jobs and a much lower facility for the community and over 300 active flying members. Yet, at the same time stating that the loss of our business would not support the viability and uh, flying function of the airfield and it would cause detrimental harm to the viability of the flying function of the airfield if we left. So Stratford District Council now seem happy to entrust the future of the airfield to the company that have run the airfield down consistently over the last five years. They've forced the eviction of the majority of businesses on the airfield and there's been a decline of around 75% of aircraft movements. The council now claimed that the new plan is to release parts of the site for development to make the airfield sustainable. So sustainable. This is when the landowners have done everything they can in the past five years to run the airfield down, to make it unsustainable, to make it unviable, purely to make it more ripe for development. So, do the local authority really swallow that? Reward the company that have run the airfield down by releasing land for development to make it sustainable. And by the way, they're going to apparently move and rebuild the runway at an estimated cost of 15 million pounds. Really? On the 23rd of October 2019, the Deputy Leader of Stratford District Council assured me that should there be any breach of the Memorandum of Understanding, there would be robust and early action to ensure that the breach was remedied. The landowners did not enter into negotiation with all the tenants. They did not protect the established flying function. They did not retain a flying club and they did not work with the council to ensure those goals. And to date, Stratford District Council have taken no action about the breach of the MOU. My company, Take Flight Aviation, spent in excess of £250,000, a quarter of a million pounds, protecting the airfield and attempt to protect our lease and our business, our staff and our members. And that was on top of an amazing £48,000 that was raised through crowdfunding that was raised to 
help the tenants appeal the original court decision, albeit unsuccessfully, and also attempt to have the case heard at the Supreme Court. My one lesson from this so far is don't trust lawyers. It's time now that Stratford District Council take action, progress the CPO of the airfield and put it in the hands of people that truly want to protect the airfield for future generations. With the imminent closure of Coventry, reducing facilities at Gloucester and Wolverhampton, the airfields all around us are being eroded. And what's really disappointing is the one company that stood up and fought for their airfield, fought for their business, fought for their pilots, and fought for the future generation of pilots has been dismissed by the council that promised to protect them. Thank you for watching, thank you for your continued support. It's the public support that really has kept us going through all this. So thanks from me and from all the Take Flight Aviation team. And thank you so much for watching.